We want something to happen when our character gets to the end. We want it to go to the next level. So let's have a look at our different scenes. We've only got two scenes. Of scenes. We've got the initial scene and the scary face. So we need to add some more. Let's go to home. Let's go to scenes. And let's go plus. We'll drag that into there. Swap that around. And we'll call this one scene for level two. We'll call it level two. We'll call this one level one. Good to name things properly. So that's that. Let's go back to this level. Let's look at the player again. Let's look at what we've got. We've got this one. This rule is the, uh, the this, when it hits the wall it goes to the next scene. Now we don't want that to happen anymore because the next scene is level two, not scary face. So we will go back to this, go back to the player. Let's change this to, instead of next scene, change it to scary face. So when it hits the wall, it'll always go to the scary face scene, which is great. So that's, um, we'll call that jump scare. <coughs> that's our scare. Right, we can hide that one away, we're finished with it. We do want something to happen when it hits the finish line. So let's create a new rule. So when the actor overlaps or collides with the finish line, or the finish actor, something's going to happen. It's going to go to the next scene. So let's go back to behaviors. Let's go to change scene again, drag that in. This time we do want it to go to next scene. So that's fine. As long as our jump scare is also the scary face scene is always at the end, the next scene should be fine. Let's just test it out. Let's see if I can get to the end. I always test. Oh, see, that's the problem, isn't it? Getting to the end. Sometimes, if it's too hard, or see, I can't even finish it. Sometimes it's good to actually put your finish line, have an extra finish line. Just you could just put it there. Boom. Yep, goes to the next scene that doesn't have anything in it yet. Let's work on that next. <clears throat> 